Thank you so much, Paige, and um, thanks for having me. I'm super honored to be here. Um, Lena approached me earlier this year at PI, and I was kind of sharing my story and how, how I got rolled into 3D. And um, so I'll talk about that a little bit right now. I um, started about 10 years ago in the fashion industry, and I started in product development. I was actually planning to be in merchandising, but product development is what it, what it became. Super happy about that. Would, totally something for me. And um, I was in product development, and I got introduced to 3D tools while I was at Nike. And I kind of saw it, and we did some trials, like doing proto, uh, digital proto reviews, and I was like, ah, this is a great gimmick, but I'm not interested. Fast forward a year later, and my job role changed to be more tech design focused. So really great. The only problem was I had zero pattern making skills. I'm like, oh, how am I going to do this? So 3D came back on the radar because I really found that with 3D, I could, as a not so skilled pattern maker, still visualize and show changes and, and work with the factory to really show them, oh, this is what I want to do. And I could work with their pattern maker to change things. But also work with the design team to show, to, for them to show me what they want to do. And we would do it together behind our screen. So that's really what excited me about it. And from there, I rolled into some really cool um, innovation projects together with Nike. And it really is like, this is, this is my future. This is where I want to go. And then I started at Stitch a year ago. And Stitch is a startup of PVH Europe. And um, we are kind of like a separate team within PVH Europe. And we really focus on transforming the product creation teams there from a 2D way of working to a 3D way of working. And we do this through creating our own software applications that work together with Browseware and also change management and digital transformation. So I found this lovely GIF because this is really what digital transformation and change management means to me. It's about people and it's about lifting each other up and helping each other get there because it's never easy and it's usually very scary. And um, especially when we talk about digital transformation in fashion, we're under super tight deadlines. Calendar seems to be getting shorter every week, and we have to deliver the same amount of styles or even more sometimes. So how, within this crazy process, are we going to implement a new tool? People under pressure will go back to what they're comfortable with and what they feel that can make them hit their deadlines, and that's super logical. So what we do as Stitch is really see, how can we take away some of that fear, and how can we help them, empower them, and make them feel comfortable in this tool and make them feel that they can hit their deadline and add value to what they're delivering. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but first, just to bring us back, why 3D? And this is one of my favorite slides that I love sharing with everyone. So the left image is a photo shoot sample that we're all used to seeing. This is how most of our companies sell, either in line book or whichever way your company sells, internally, externally. And then the right side is the same style, but in 3D. And it looks pretty amazing, I think. It has life to it. It looks good. It shows different kinds of details. So not only will you be able to visualize better, but you think about what that means for the bottom line. Even if you just look at the photo shoot samples that you order, think about taking that away, about the whole photo shoot process that you might have. Think about what that investment and value could mean for you. And we talk about the full digital value chain, as we like to refer to it. So the designer starts at the design brief, starts designing in 3D, uses that same image that they're creating all the way in their sketch reviews into digital selling. So one file, one truth, and one source for it. And everyone will have access to this imagery of this style way before they usually would with a proto. So that brings me to Stitch again. So I already did a small introduction about what we do. And we combine that with tech and transformation together. So we have a tech team in-house that creates our software. And we have a transformation team. And this is the team that I lead. And it consists out of an academy where we train our users and run workshops and also 3D leads that really sit with our product creation teams and help them through the process. And support is something key that I want to talk about today. Um, but first, this. The left-hand image is the Design Hub. And this is Design Hub is one of our softwares that we create. And this is basically our visual library for all digital assets. I'll touch later on why it's so important to create core libraries up front. 
I saw it on one of the Nordstrom style, uh, slides as well. Super important. There needs to be a starting point for your teams to start off with. And the second is for us, the digital phone board. Everyone knows physical boards. They're super, they're a lot of work. You have to usually recut and resize papers. Something changes, you have to do it all over again. So with the digital phone board, we're really looking at how can we do this digitally and add value and time for the designer. We see by using this tool, we're saving 70% of the time of design. And that means they can focus on designing. For us, it doesn't mean shortening the calendar. It means they have more time to focus on what they're good at, being creative, spending time on that design instead of pinning boards. And then lastly for us is the digital showroom, which is a great initiative as well of PVH, where um, we sell digitally, so we reduce sales samples. So we can now use that 3D image that's created from the design hub, shown in the phone board, and eventually sell in the digital showroom. So I want to talk a little bit about our year and what we've gone through and what we've learned and where we made mistakes and how we move on from it and specifically about change management. Um, I got into this job not really knowing a lot about change management, so it was all really new for me a year ago as well, so this, I'll take you through my journey and what I've learned. The first thing I learned is that there is no one process for anyone. No person and no product creation team works the same way. So what really, really, we really do is focus on the person, sit with them and listen to them. How do you work? What do you need from us? How can we help you achieve your goal? And each person will need a different kind of support. And that's really where we tailor how we work with them. Some designers or pattern makers are a bit insecure about the tool, and so we add some more support for them. And others are like, I got this. I don't need you. I want to be successful on my own. And that's good, too. So it's really about focusing on the person, not so much about the rollout of software. And um, we also look at leadership support, because it's important for people to have a goal. Why am I doing this? Why am I spending time learning a new tool? Well, this is the end goal. This is where I want to get at. And um, talk about ownership. Sit beforehand and discuss who's going to do what. It's like such a new process that we sometimes would start with a new division and just jump in. We're so excited. We're going to do this. Everything's going to be 3D. It's going to be amazing. And then halfway through, like, but wait, who does what? And where does that sit? So really important to make really good decisions on who does what. And that might be different per team that you work with or per person that you work with. Um, and I just want to show this. This is kind of where the workflow is right now for us. So we see a lot of effort pretty equally across everything. And this is really where we want to go. We want to automate sorry, part of that file management. If we listen to our designers, they say, you know, file management is one of the biggest things, one of the biggest hurdles. I still need to make a lot of tech packs. I need to upload my imagery everywhere. So we want to take that away with some of um, the initiatives that we work on. And then start slow. I would definitely recommend. We, we've gone into like pretty big product groups um, with 400 SKUs every season, so it's a lot. Um, and we've seen more success when we start slow. Maybe just with teas, maybe just four products. Start slow so people feel comfortable and out of their own, they'll start adding, wanting to add more product. We see that happen. Like they'll start with a tea and then two seasons later, they're doing outerwear. And I'm like, this is amazing. Um, but it's because they started slow and it was not so much pressure. And it was easy for them still to hit their deadline because it didn't affect them as much. And um, what we also allow is for the teams to choose the product they want to work on. So we sit beforehand with the product creation teams and say, what do you want to do? What, where do you see the opportunity for 3D, what you're doing, and have them decide what they want to work on? Even if that means they're doing two polos, that's, that's good. We're there. We're, we're here for you and support you. Because we know in the end it's going to become bigger, and they're going to want to do everything in 3D. And lastly is that it's OK to fail. This is new territory. I mean, every day I wake up, I'm like, there's going to be something thrown at me, and I have no idea. We've never run into this. How are we going to solve this? So having the feeling that it's OK to make a mistake and move on from it and pivot and know that you're still on the right track is super important. 
And this is one of the things that we do to help with that. We make videos to show the 2D process versus the 3D process to really visualize, you know, you're doing the same thing just in a different tool and you're gonna get there and it's gonna look really good. And it might be a little slow in the beginning, but eventually you're gonna see that it's gonna take you similar amounts of time once you're up to speed. So we do a lot of those initiatives as well, visualizing the change and visualizing what it's gonna mean for them. And then libraries, training and support, very important. Earlier in my career, I would be trained in a 3D tool, be like four days, and then I would be back at my desk and be like, wait, what, how do I use this? And maybe a week later be like, what was that again? I can't remember. Um, so what we really do with our academies, make sure that there's always training. We have set trainings, we have eight modules every week that people can sign up for. Doesn't matter how often they want to sign up for or who they are, everyone is welcome. And we also have workshops. So having that accessibility to training and knowing that is there really helps. And we make sure that we train people maximum of two weeks before they're gonna start using it in their workflow. Because you want it to be applicable to what you're doing straight away. Otherwise you're gonna forget and go back to Illustrator and whatever tool you use. And then libraries is a big one for us. Touched on it earlier. It's important for there to be a starting point. Having your blocks in 3D already that a designer or a pattern maker can pick that up and start changing from there. There's already a starting point making sure their fabrics are available so that when they're designing or when they're working on their patterns in 3D, they know that the fabric they're using is draping the same way as it would in actuality. Same goes for trims. And we see that takes away a lot of the initial, oh, I don't know how to do this, it's so much, um, having that ready for them. And then we talk about support, and support is really where we come in with our 3D leads, where we sit together with the teams and talk about objectives. What is your objective with 3D? not only at senior leadership level, but also a designer. What do you want to get out of it? And let's record that so you can make sure that you can measure your success and feel like you can celebrate it, whatever it might be. We've seen that if we don't do that, we run into roadblocks, because you will eventually, because sometimes things are hard or sometimes the render comes out crazy and you're like, ugh. Um, so setting those objectives is important to feel like you can celebrate something, be proud of it, even if it's something small, even if it's the two polos we talked about. So very important on all levels of the organization. These are some of the libraries that we build. And we house those in our design hub, which I'll show you a short video of. This is our visual library that we use where anyone in our company can go to to pick up whatever block they would have, any color cards they might need, trims, and fabrics. And we also house our render farm in the design hub. And we have our own render farm because we want the same visual consistency and the same views across the company. So that when it is in digital selling or when they are presenting different product groups, that it all looks similar and the same with the same lighting. That consistency is really what we go for. And it also provides a speed in our process. The biggest call out about the difference between 2D and 3D that we hear is the rendering part, because it's not something you do in Illustrator. You press save, it might take a while, but you're used to that and it's there. But with rendering, it can take up to like 14 minutes for some views and some colorways and you're just sitting there staring at this thing that's turning on your screen and you're like, come on. So we wanna take that away. We, we make sure now that we can render in the background while the designer or the pattern maker keeps working. So those are kind of the initiatives we see. How is 2D and 3D different? And where are the pain points that make it harder for 3D? And we focus on those. And another thing is our digital foam words. So everyone knows this view. We all have them around. They take up so much space. They're so big. Um, so this is a screenshot of our digital foam word. This is one of our internal projects we're doing on zero waste. Um, so it has boards over views, and you can get detailed views of your boards. The same that you would pin on a board, but it's all digitally. And it's integrated with our render farm. It means it gets populated with whatever you're rendering as a user. So this is where we see that big time saving of 70% of their time using the digital phone board. And lastly, training. I wanna show you a video of one of the workshops we, that we do. Um, it's called Product in a Day, and it's where we design with product creation teams in uh, 3D and browser in the morning, and we 
stitch that same design up in the afternoon physically. And we did a really great collaboration with Browser and well, as well in Hong Kong recently. And we see this, these kind of workshops help take people out of their normal day and really help them think about, hey, how can I use 3D in my day-to-day -day and how is it going to help me? fun workshops for us to work on um, and we see actually we see some designers come in they're like oh, I don't want to be here this is not for me I'm too creative for this and they actually leave seeing potential and some don't and that's okay um, but we see more than not that they leave feeling inspired and really wanting to do this and the last thing I want to talk about is metrics this is one of our biggest learnings how do you quantify what you're doing because not everything is quantifiable you're visualizing your designs better, and they might sell better, but that doesn't mean it's because of you're in 3D. It might just be because the design looks amazing. Um, so those things are kind of hard to quantify, but you have to start capturing what you can quantify, which means how much more time does my designer get to spend in design? How are we more successful in our fits because we can visualize them earlier? How much time is it saving somewhere else, or maybe not? But also, what does it mean for my bottom line? Where am I seeing monetary value? Because you're going to make an investment. And that's where you have to think about beforehand, back to the objectives. What were my objectives? And how am I tracking against those? And make sure you share those at all levels, because you have to keep the ball rolling and the excitement about 3D, and making sure that everyone in the full company sees the value. And this is why we also do trainings and workshops for supporting functions. like. We've had the legal team over, we've had business development over, visual merchandising, anyone in the company that's interested, because the more people that see 3D see the value and start asking for it. You don't just want your product creation teams to ask for it, you want your marketing team to ask for it, you want your visual merchandising team to ask for it, you want everyone in the whole company talking about 3D. And that's why we do trainings or workshops for whoever would like to. And I want to close off with this image. Looks pretty cool, right? Think about not only internal selling, but how can you use digital assets for e-com or brand or marketing? Usually, um, these teams need to wait a while to get samples or see what's actually coming out. But what if they can use the digital assets that the designer is creating to create brand imagery, videos, everything hyper real using digital assets? And I want to leave you with that and think about not only the potential within the day-to-day -day product creation, but also what it means for other teams within your company um, or your brand. So I thank you for your time.